time for another week of Unlock the Fox's Brock Hewitt. You see him right there in front of his bricks. I'm Lance Taylor in front of my bricks here at the next round. Disrupt the media. Make sure you like, subscribe, give us that thumbs up. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, including you, coming to us from Missoula, Montana. One of my favorite states. I've only been to one time, but I had an incredible week there. I'm a huge fan. I did have bear spray. I was one of those tourists that went out. I bought the bear spray because I was going to be going on a couple of hikes. We were at a remote cabin in the middle of nowhere, and I just needed to have it. I got kids around, and then they were like, if a, if a bear does a dead sprint, are you going to be able to have the balls to spray it? And I'm like, <laughs> well, hell, funny. I hope so. We will never know unless we're in that situation, and thank God I was never in that now, situation. Yeah, funny you say that, Lance. We were, let's see, what day is today? Whatever day it is, day before Thanksgiving. We're doing Thanksgiving as a family today because my girls play here. Had a great win in Phoenix Monday night against Grand Canyon University, top 15 mid-major, ranked They're really good. Go so Grizz. big win, big, big win. And um, my freshman daughter, Macy, forgot to take her bear spray out of her backpack, went through a TSA, and it was, it was as if she had heroin in her backpack. Yeah, really. I remember going through the um, – the Bozeman airport and they have huge signs. Yes. No bear spray, no bear yes. spray. Yes. I had to leave my bear spray. That oh, I yeah. she, had, on. she had to fill out forms and she was nearly handcuffed. Like, what are you doing? I just forgot my bear spray in my backpack. Cause she carries it too. When she leaves the gym late at night, I think it's pepper spray in one hand, bear spray in the other on the Missoula campus. Don't mess with Macy Heward. <laughs> yeah. Well, Macy, I would just carry the bear spray. I mean, if a dude True. is going to come up, <laughs> yeah, put his ass down with the bear spray. Have you heard any stories like through them with any locals, anybody you've met that's ever had to actually pull the bear spray? Well, they get alerts on their phone. I think all the ki uh, kids on campus get an alert when there is a bear on campus. And there are bears occasionally on campus. So, yeah, you've got to be a little prepared. I don't know the last mauling, Lance. I, I can't tell you that. You know, next, next week, I'll dig into that. I'll, well, I'll have I have the over-under for you. <laughs> Trust me, I'm one of those weirdos. When I was in, in Big Sky, so we went from – we were all over Yellowstone, Big Sky. But when I was in Big Sky, I was pulling fatalities. And a dude on his bicycle had been mauled and killed like two or three months before we were out there. Yes. So it does happen. Oh, it does. It does. We had a friend of ours. We stayed up in Glacier National Park um, with the, with some friends, and she lost her husband. And it was on a bike. He was an amazing guy. He was a sheriff. It was a big, big story. And he was flying on his bike at like 30 miles an hour. And this grizzly just came out and they collided and totally spooked it. And yeah, so it, it is, it is real. It is very, very, very sad. I think on campus here in a kind of a, a, a city like Missoula, I think those bears, maybe not quite as outrageous as you. And I can just picture Lance there with your bear spray on them hiking trails, ready to go. <laughs> Dude, I am so tough. I sprayed the bear spray just to, to, to feel what it was like. And the wind blew around and it caught me with a little bit of it. And, uh, yeah, that stuff is potent. And I just got a quick <laughs> whiff of it. One more thing on the bear thing, and then we'll transition into some football here on the Thanksgiving weekend. Have you ever seen the video of the biker? It's like a mountain biker coming down a trail, and there is a grizzly on a dead sprint. He ultimately gets away from it. But can you imagine the pressure of being on a mountain bike and having that grizzly behind you? Uh, no, thanks. Absolutely. No, <laughs> thanks. And not, not even a grizzly. That is a black bear. That is a that is a, a mountain lion. That's a cougar. That is no, no thank you for me on any of that. I love it. We were up in Glacier, as I said, near Flathead Lake, which for any of you down there in Alabama, if you ever do want to make a trip, you have got to experience what you did, right? You went to yep. Big Sky, Yellowstone. Well, you go up the other way, north of Missoula, you know, and you get to Flathead Lake where Phil Jackson built his compound and and uh, and he's in his in his teepee and everything else. And then even further into the national parks, man, it is you feel very small in God's creation. Like it is a reminder of big sky, big country, uh, just just absolutely a, a must to see on your bucket list. Well, I thought we were going to get chaos in your window last weekend. You know, I thought uh, you guys were in Ames. It never happened. And then in Corvallis. That was typical Pacific Northwest November weather. You played in that. I was sitting there with people just watching at my house, and we had a fire pit going. And they were asking, they were like, where is that? I was, it, it's in Corvallis. It's 40 degrees, and it's basically sleeting. That yeah. has got to be the most miserable weather 
to sit and watch a game in. I know your yes. parents did it. I know yes. you played in it. Uh, how bad was it? That's pretty bad. Yeah. Now, it wasn't like horrifically windy. I think that calmed down like the week before the Husky game we did. <laughs> you saw all seasons of it. You saw blue sky. You saw rain. But it was windy. And and that actually messed with Penix, I think, even more than the rain. His receivers had a hard time. I mean, he had four or five drops that were pretty significant. Um, I thought he cut through it with his football pretty well. And certainly in big moments, much, much better than DJ did. We talked about that. I said to you like last week, like if Oregon State's going to do this, DJ's going to have to play. You know, you've talked about bad Knicks. We've not seen bad Knicks. Nope. You know, we got a chance to see um, an inaccurate Uwe Angele and some big moments with a couple picks and and just, you know, an overall accuracy that is nowhere near what Penix's was. Uh, yeah, the worst weather I ever, ever played in. I played in 15 degrees in Pullman. Uh, we had a snow game a couple times with the Colts in, in New England and India in Denver, which – you know, wasn't that bad. The worst weather was similar to that. We played San Jose State non-conference, crazy November game, 38, rain, wind. You just, it, once it penetrates and once you get wet and it's that cold, it's just pure, pure misery, pure, pure misery. So that was, that was the worst. And it's pretty brutal. That first half, especially really neutralized things, made it an uber tight game. And Kudos to those Huskies, man. They just find a way to win, Lance. And, yeah. you know, I got them this week. I got both the Civil War and the Apple Cup, and I'm looking at my board, and it's probably shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, at this point of the year, you've got nothing but fifth and sixth year seniors really playing for, for Washington and a ton of them for Oregon as well, and Oregon State for that matter. Well, I mean, it is veteran the, teams. The cool thing is the Apple Cup signed an extension, so we'll see that at least through 2028. Civil War, on the other hand, we don't know when we're going to see it again. So we'll start there. Uh, Bo Nix is having a tremendous season. Some sports books have got him as the favorite right now. It's either him or Jaden Daniels, and then Michael Penix is right there at number three. But you've talked about this. He is a facilitator. He, he has yep. done a great job at playing point guard this year for Dan Lanning. He's not making mistakes. He's not taking sacks. One of the reasons is because the throws are so quick. If you're a defensive coordinator, how do you defend what they're doing right now? That will be my question for uh, Coach Bray here uh, soon this afternoon on a, a little Zoom with those guys because it's – I mean, you, you really can't. You know, you can come up and try to press them, and you can try to – and they do. I think Oregon State's 70% press coverage, which is top 15 in the country. To your point about Bo, he's like top 20 in the country, 2.4 seconds on average, which sounds like, well, you know, that's time to get home, but – He's either like ball out in a hurry or it's a deeper play action shot. And that's why it's skewed. Most of those throws are well under two seconds, if not a second. Uh, in fact, further numbers, only 11% of his throws. So nine out of his 10 throws are less than 20 yards. Only one out of 10 is he pushing the ball down the field. And that too is like way, way up there as far as fewest throws deep down the field. So it's screens. It's getting the ball out in quick game. He's got tremendous accuracy and timing on those. And, you know, I think it's easy, Lance, to, to diminish that and say, oh, all he is is a facilitator. All he is is just spraying the ball out. Oh, anybody can do that. No, not anybody could do that. To have just that hand-eye, to have the quickness in the release, to have the accuracy in that short game, it all plays along with his athleticism and some of his movement skills. So, Perfect fit for Kenny uh, Dillingham last year. It's continued into this year. He's playing with extreme confidence. 58 starts. 58 That's starts. Insane. The most ever in the history will never be broken. You know, God forbid we ever see another pandemic and the NCAA grants another year and all this craziness. I don't think we'll ever see. He'll start 59. He'll start, you know, if they win 60, a bowl game 61. He'll never be done in the history of college football again. Durability, availability, and just a guy that's playing in a way that he never played down there at Auburn. I'm going to do this on the fly. I am Googling something right now because you bring up that number. And I, I knew that he had the most starts in college football history. And I think, you know, brought it up when it was like 55 or 56. Uh -huh. But his first collegiate start ever, do you remember who it was against? No. It was against Oregon and Justin Herbert. And I am just wondering to myself – um, if Justin Herbert has that many complete NFL starts to this point, <laughs> I, I don't know if he does. I'm trying yeah. to uh, trying That's to see this question. here. 
So uh, year four, yeah, year four for Herbert, right? In the NFL, year three, year yeah, three for Herbert. Now this year four, 2021, 20, 22, and 23. So I guess he's got it, but boy, it would be close. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, 32 I, and 7, 49. Yeah, but I mean, it's right there, same. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and, and he's playing that way. He's just playing with that kind of maturity. He's got a tremendous lance, a tremendous supporting staff. I mean, Bucky Irving got robbed to not be a semifinalist for this Dope Walker Award. Uh, it's, it's it's insanity. Um, Troy Franklin's a finalist, going to be a finalist for the Belindikoff semifinalist right now. He is phenomenal. His his friend, you've heard the story of Tez, I'm sure, and Bo, his, his buddy from Alabama that they took in his senior year of high school. And just a, he's he's playing lights out. Left tackle is an absolute stud. Center is a stud. I mean, they are they are loaded. And you watch the tape and you do try to figure out, OK, how do you slow them down? How, how can you contain them? No one has. I mean, no one has really done it this season. You know, two one score games out of 11, two one score games. That is it. One one. Lost one. Everything else has been a boat race. And the Beavers, unfortunately, Lance, pretty banged up. Well, that, so, that is a 7.30 kick on your network on Fox. Yep. Then you mentioned you're going to Seattle, your stomping grounds, to, to watch the Apple Cup. Uh, there was a moment in time just about six weeks ago where we were talking about the Palouse and how uh, frenetic this fan base was and how they wanted Washington State to go out the right way. And they haven't been a good product really since – what happened to Cam Ward? What happened to that offense? And what kind of took Washington State yeah. off the rails? Yeah, just thin, just thin depth, you know, and it's and it's why no team has done what Washington has done. And that's run the gauntlet in this conference. UW's got a chance to do that, Lance. Since the conference expanded to 12, no team has done it. And they've got an ability and opportunity. I wish I was just going to watch it. I'm actually going to call it too. So <laughs> we are getting on a bus as a crew. Um, I think our producer said never been done. You know, I don't think it's ever been done that the same crew, cameras, take uh, all the crew is going from Eugene, busting up through the middle of the night. They won't sleep. I'll get a few hours, um, set up the booth and go. So two games in 16 hours, which I just can't wait to do and be a part of it. But Wazoo just got thin. They got beat up. UCLA rocked them. They were undefeated going down there. UCLA is the best front seven in the conference, unbelievably physical, knocked them around, knocked dudes out. And then he started to hear, I think, just some of the emotion of what's gone on as well. Uh, the reality that this was ending. You know, Jake Dickert was pretty vocal um, in that process, if you remember, you know, just talking about how they've been wronged and trouble with that, transfer portal, injuries, just, you know, a beat up team. But kudos to them on senior night. They responded, they buried. Dion, they buried Shadur in Colorado and gives them some life with the bowl game on the line as they try to regroup, just devastate a national title opportunity for the Huskies. Can you imagine? While it will continue, you're right, it will be played in September. It won't be a conference game. It won't be at the end of the year. And you can have the label of the game of the Apple Cup, but you know a lot of that is going to end Saturday afternoon. So we've got the Iron Bowl here this weekend, and and literally crazy things have happened at this Iron Bowl, especially when they're played in Jordan Hare. You know, just two years ago, Bryce Young wins a Heisman Trophy, Alabama wins the SEC Championship, and they lose in a rematch in the National Championship in Indianapolis to Georgia en route to Kirby Smart's first National Championship. But it took a 97-play drive with mm -hmm. under a minute to go from Bryce Young to pull that out of his ass, literally, against Auburn. So my question to you, when you look at the Civil War and Apple Cup, those are great rivalries too. Maybe yep. not on the scale that you get with an Iron Bowl, but do you believe that the underdogs, both Oregon State and Washington State, have fighting shots in these games? It's going to be pretty hard to do it on the road. You mentioned kind of Jordan Hare and the difference, you know, and I don't know if it's been quite as crazy in the Iron Bowls when it's been played in T-Town, you know, with an underdog Tigers team or vice yeah. versa, though. It and feels it has it. <laughs> you know, so that that's the hard part. I think it's 17 and 14, I believe, are the, are the spreads yep. for the, you know, for the Cougs first going to Seattle. If this was in Pullman, Lance, on Saturday, like, Oh, the imagine the amount of vitriol and pure hatred, not even sports hate, but pure hatred that those Kook fans have for the Huskies who feel like they were the one that put the final nail in the coffin, that they had a chance. Jen Cohen at that time had a chance to kind of stop the process and say, no, 
Maybe we will look out for the others. Maybe we'll do a deal with Apple. Maybe and instead, you know, looked out for their best interest, which is what college football, sadly, is all about now. Everybody from player to coach to administrator to university just looks out for their own best interest. So if this were in Pullman, it wouldn't be, I don't think, a 17 point spread. It'd probably be a eight or nine point spread. The fact it's in Washington. Now, Cougs are going to score. Cam Ward's going to do some things. He's going to scramble around. He's going to make some plays. They're fourth leading passing team in the country. And and UW's defense has, you know, a bunch of holes in it. You know, they're not elite. So they're going to score. It's just whether or not they can score enough to keep up with Penix and crew over four quarters. It's Unlocked with Fox's Brock. You are joining us from Montana, Missoula, Montana, en route to a Pacific Northwest trip. This holiday weekend, it is always brought to you by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. They've got great stocking stuffers. Put in that promo code UNLOCKED. They're going to hook you up and check out of manscaped.com. So we talked about the quarterbacks right now in the Pac-12. Bo Nix having an incredible year. Michael Penix, the numbers weren't great in Corvallis, but the throws he was able to make in those conditions, clutch, clutch play. Those two guys, but on the other side, you got Jaden Daniels. And this Mm. is a guy that transfers from the Pac-12 in Arizona State to LSU, he's playing great defenses, and you can't stop the guy right now. He is, like, unstoppable. I know they have three losses, but to me, he's the best player in college football right now. Jaden Daniels versus those two other quarterbacks right now. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels. It's so hard. I mean, I'm a Heisman voter. Are you a Heisman voter, Lance? I am. I yeah, am. good. You're credentialed for that. And it must have been your trip out to Montana when they saw you with bear spray. And they're like, this it was. Is, they were like, this, this guy has got credibility. Yeah, he packs a big bear spray. Tough, tough dude. We need him on our team. We need him as a voter. I, I will tell you, as a voter, though, it has been relatively easy. Like yes. every year, my guy has yep. won outside, and people think this is bias. It wasn't. I had two of the year over Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray ends up winning the Heisman yep. Trophy. I decided two yep. was that good, but it was really close. But yep. this year, it becomes a little more difficult because you do throw the equation of three losses yes. in there. Yes. I think the last time, and you can check me on this, but years ago, gosh, I remember, remember doing this. We actually had a, a Heisman Trophy at ESPN or, or one that was of the same ilk and weight and everything else. And I was young in my career and very hungry to impress Lance. And I did all this work for College Football Live. And I looked at like the last 30 Heisman Trophy winners. And what are some have-tos? Like that you have to reach this level, you know, team and championship and wins. And, you know, and one of those, I think the only one, and maybe to this day still, and you can, again, fact check me on this, but pretty sure Tim Tebow was the only one that went nine and three that had three losses and on, on his resume, all the rest of them were zero one elite championship teams, Bonix, Penix, right? Like, right there, like playing for a champion, playing for a championship and on that stage. And that's what makes this one, you're, you're, you're right, so hard. You know, save for the opener where Jaden played, can, a, played a role go, in that loss. Jaden played a role in that loss. Can I, go, can I correct you real quick? Oh, go ahead. Lamar Jackson, three losses. Okay. Robert Robert Griffin the third, three losses. Tim Tebow, you're right. And then Ricky Williams, three losses. Okay. So since, yep, since I had done that early in my career, a few of those guys had, had accomplished it, but it's, it's hard to do. And I'd be curious in those years, <laughs> the two other guys yeah. that were in New York with them, were they 12 and 0, 12 and 1? Like, you know, that, that comes into play as well. Cause Bo Nix has all the numbers, has all the pedigree, you know, and, and if, if he goes on to, to beat the Beavers and beat the Huskies, going to be very, very difficult. Michael Penix puts on a show and throws for 505 tuds and does what he does to the Cougars the week before, and they get to, to Vegas, and somehow, some way, he beats the Ducks for the third time. And playing in a dome will be very favorable and, and should have Jalen McMillan, who's getting healthy and all of his weapons, and he throws for 450 and five tuds, and he's 13-0? and 0? Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I, I love Jaden, and you're right, it's silly. But when you're target, and that's the other thing, Jaden Daniels is not playing with the pressure and the target and just the magnitude of these games. He's getting to play like, hey, I'm going to go do my thing. And he is, and he's cutting it loose, and he's letting it rip, but there's nothing on the line. Those other two are carrying the weight of that burden and expectation and the target that you get everybody's best week in and week out. going to be hard for me to, if they go do that, one of those two, Hard for me not to put them on my ballot. As we transfer our transition into uh, Thanksgiving football here on Unlocked, I hear something sizzling in the kitchen. I know yes. you're doing Thanksgiving a day early. What uh, what do we got cooking in there? 
lots. We got lots. We got a bunch of college kids coming to the house. So let's just say Costco was uh, Costco was a home run this morning. <laughs> okay. Well, you look, I mean, you're a big dude, but you've always stayed, you're always thin. You're always, you know, kind of wiry. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you do you eat a lot? <laughs> I must I must say, um, you know, a lot higher body fat than, than I used to have. It's, okay, well, yeah, we that's all of us. Yeah, we had this discussion on my radio show this morning. Like, are you middle aged? Heck yeah, I'm middle aged, 47 for crying yeah. out loud. I'm wearing readers and my body hurts. And um, no, we got we got mashed potatoes, we got every pie, we got ham. I actually used um, Gold Belly, Gold Burr, Gold something, the app where I could bring in a, a Cajun deep fried turkey oh. from Louisiana, and I got a turducken that hopefully arrives here soon. Uh, we've got breads, we've got salads, we've got mac and cheese. I mean, it is the challenge is going to be one of them. You know, that's going to be it's yeah. like the game plan for stopping the Oregon Ducks. How do you put together a plan to stop the Ducks? How do we do all of this in a VRBO hundred year old uh, place? The oven's new, but we'll see. My wife's a magician. She's going to have to put on yeah. some serious skills today. I, I, I got uh, complete confidence that she will be resilient and find a way to battle through and get all the food on the table. Uh, what did it mean, though? Your dad was a coach. I mean, you played in a lot of these big games and Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's great for all of us because we get to sit around and eat and watch football. But for you guys, you were working. So what was Thanksgiving like growing up in the Heward family? Yeah, and still kind of working. I mean, that's the one, you know, trade-off to, to this job. Now, it's nice at Fox. We don't have bowl games. So, you know, once the Mountain West Championship, uh, Pac-12 is on ABC. So we get the Mountain West and Joel and Gus will do the Big Ten. And then we'll get to enjoy Christmas and have the last three or four years versus – all my years at ESPN kind of missing not only Thanksgiving and but then also Christmas, which was a double, double bummer. You know, growing up, actually, you know, there were a couple of times we played late in the season in high school um, into the state title game for my dad and everything else. And there was football practice on Thursdays. But by and large, Lance, man, Thursday in my home in Puyallup was the same as your home. It was football. It was football. It was John Madden. It was just a. Uh, you know, one of those days <laughs> where family and friends and thankful, you know, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, truly to be thankful for everything and a whole lot of football. It won't be different this time around. Actually, Titus, my son, is going to come on this trip to the Civil War, to the Apple Cup. We'll do uh, Thanksgiving dinner with the crew tomorrow night, which is very commonplace for all of these TV crews that are traveling across the country. The networks usually set up a great Thanksgiving. So we'll do it in that way. But yeah, a little makeshift, always, always, always turkey and football, though. It, it is Unlocked with Fox's Brock Heward. I'm Lance Taylor from the next round. It is on Disrupt the Media. Like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. It is always brought to you by Lance'sLock.com. Every league, uh, every day, we've got plays up, free play every day. Go to Lance'sLock.com. Got a great Thanksgiving special this weekend for you. Also, a bowl package coming up. That's it, Lance'sLock.com. Thanksgiving football, you've got the Egg Bowl, but really it's about the NFL, and now you got a triple right. header. And yep. Detroit has always been awful up until this year. They're really, really good. Um, they're hosting Green Bay. We've got the Commanders and the Cowboys, and then we've got your Seahawks hosting San Francisco. That number seven, I know San Francisco and Brock Purdy are playing really well. I assume it's Geno Smith, the injury, which, by the way, I panicked on Sunday. I don't mm. know what you thought about the play call. So the Rams had first and goal. Uh, they were trying to burn those timeouts, but on third yep. down they throw. I didn't have a problem with that if you're going to throw on fourth down, which they did. They threw underneath and just kind of set up the game-winning field goal. But my thought process was there's no way Geno's coming back in this game, and Drew Locke's not going to lead them down for a touchdown. It is so easy under a minute in the NFL to get into yes. field goal position. And so yeah. I didn't have a problem with that necessarily. Did you? I had a problem with him running the ball in that moment. Like once you get down there and he makes a great throw on third down and you're sitting there at the 39-yard line, spike the ball. Yeah, so no, got, no, I'm, talking about, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about before. Oh, no, Rams, absolutely. No, 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 I was like, no you got to go for the win here. You got to go for the win. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're three and six. Like, you got to go for the win. So I had absolutely no problem with that. Uh, I had a whole lot more problem with the way Pete and the Seahawks managed it both end of half, taking a timeout and then not taking timeouts yep. and letting them gain the momentum going into halftime. Came out poorly. You finished poorly. Lance, that's going to be one, unless you win and surprise on Thursday, on Thanksgiving night, which yeah, they could do. And those teams play down to the wire in, in Lumen Field. Doesn't really matter who the players are and everything else. 
But if you don't win and you lose to the Niners, those two versus the Rams getting swept, those will be the two you look back at the end of the Seahawks season and go, geez. I mean, McVay's 10 and 5 against Pete. You know, he's out managed him, he's out coached him, even with teams like this is not a great Rams team right now. <laughs> this is a beat up team. Yep. It's got some parts. Stafford's playing with a you know splint on his thumb. He's at yeah, probably and, 70%. And you and still they, can't. And they beat closed him. it without Cooper Cup, you know. I mean, yes. without him in there. And Puka didn't have a target, I think, until the third quarter. So that was kind of a weird thing. Do you think Gino will play Thursday night? It's totally game time. Now, yeah. it is a contusion. It's nothing structural. It's not like Purdy's, you know, elbow ligament last year. It's it's not any, it's not anything like that. It is just a huge contusion. I was surprised he didn't separate his shoulder. I mean, Aaron Donald. Oh, just, my gosh. And Aaron loves playing the Seahawks. I can't stand that guy because he's so <laughs> stinking good still against the Seahawks. He'll take five or six plays and know, like, okay, I'll change the game. I'm going to be the difference maker. And surprise that Gino frankly got up and it was only a contusion on his tricep. Pete told us Monday, you know, like, yeah, he's going to be able to go. He's going to will his way. They'll have extended time after this Thursday night game. So I'd be surprised, frankly, if he doesn't heat it up and, and, and blood flow and adrenaline, everything that's on the line. I think you're going to see Gino. But they just, man, that, I, I, I don't, you talk about throwing the controller, you know, watching my brother's game back in the day. That was a game five hours later, Sunday. I was still steaming that. Yeah. Like you can't lose that game. I, I was going to be too. I uh so girlfriend got the first really addition of me jumping up like a schoolgirl uh, and celebrating oh. after Myers missed the field goal. Yeah. Because you know, when Metcalf catches that pass on the 40, I'm like, we just lost this game. I was like, yeah. hey, you gotta be kidding. And dropping to three and seven, season was over. It's probably still over at four and six. You yep. never know, though, because we get the nope. Cardinals this coming weekend, and we are a slight favorite on the road against the Cardinals. So we'll see what happens. So this past Monday night, we got a rematch of the Super Bowl. It was the highest-rated Monday night football game in 20 years. The Eagles end up beating the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Marquez Valdez-Scantling oh. drops what would have been. And I know as a quarterback, man, that has got to hurt because he laid that thing perfectly. And then, of course, after the game, Mahomes is like, I could have thrown it a little bit better. I disagree. Should have made the catch. Should have won yep. the game. We had the Eagles at Lance'sLog.com, so we'll take it. But now at 9-1, and one, they have the best record. Are they the best team in the NFL? Sure feels that way. I mean, it feels, honestly, it's like the Chiefs and the Ravens on that side. They just feel just in totality more complete than anybody else. And then it's the Eagles and the Niners. And, you know, you just look at those teams in the way, whether it's the timing, the salary cap, and probably Kansas City fourth of those, to be honest with you, because they're just in some rebuild modes in some of their personnel groupings. But, you know, San Francisco, left tackle, slot receiver, outside receiver, running back, tight end, two pass rushers, best men alike, just star, 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 star. Talk about stars in the NBA. You still need star, 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 star in the NFL. Philly's the same way. Baltimore can be that way, although the loss of Andrews – think will be a significant one in the second half of the season. And then others aren't there. You know, Detroit's close, Dallas is somewhat close. But then, you know, there seems to be a pretty good chasm with everybody else. So, yeah, I think, you know, pin me against my brick wall right now. Who's the best team in the NFC? I sure love a team that's defined at the line of scrimmage. And Philly is defined at the line of scrimmage. Perimeter players, Jalen, all cherry on top. But give me dominant D-line. Dominant O line, and I like my chances over the course of 17 weeks. Okay, before we let you roll and enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday here, is there any kind of interesting traditions in the Heward uh, household that you guys, I mean, is it board games, movie, um, anything interesting? No, not terribly so. I've done a couple turkey bowls. You know, I mean, we would always, in between games growing up, it was always in the backyard, front yard, you know, who can throw it furthest and all that fun stuff. Who can throw it over the power lines? Who can do who those did different have the stronger things? arm? I know the I, I looked at this the other night. I was looking because mm -hmm. I was seeing where Penix was on the pecking order of all time passers in Washington. You've actually got the older brother. You're in front of him. Yeah. I mean, different era, different times, all different strengths. Luke was the best athlete. He also had the most rage and anger and frankly should have been a linebacker. Uh, Damon, Damon, by far the best touch accuracy, whether it was a three point shooting, whether it was command as a pitcher, whether it was, you know, touch. And then, yeah, nobody, they couldn't come on. I could throw it through the fence. All right. So yeah, that was, was uncle Reno. Is that right? 
Yeah, Uncle Rico, throw it over Rico, those mountains Rico. over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the Rocky Mountains or whatever is here in Missoula. Yeah. I could still, I could still hum it pretty, pretty good. Not, not like I used to, but spiral velocity. That was me. So thankfully, we all had different traits that we brought, and we just tried to make sure that little Luke didn't lose his cool and throw us into the closets. I love it. Okay, so seven seven thirty Fox Friday night, the Civil War. Oregon State, Oregon, you will be there in Eugene. And then what we got? Three o'clock box. Saturday, yep. you're going to be in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, look, man, that's exciting. That's two fun that's games. Cool. Everybody will be uh, engaged in those games. I mean, most people will be hoping for massive upsets and chaos. We'll see what happens. Uh, but safe travels. Enjoy Thanksgiving, man. You're always great. I appreciate you, Lance. Yeah, it'll be surreal, man, for real. Like when I did the Husky Utah game a couple weeks ago, People will ask me like, hey, is it hard? Do you have a bias? I'm like, not really. You know, I mean, I just, sure, I played in this place, but they're all new faces, right? <laughs> Turnover is so much in 20-something years. But that game Saturday, I ain't going to lie, just because so many memories, Ryan Leaf beating me in that building, tearing down our goalposts, you know, going to the Rose Bowl, playing the Cougs, knowing this is the last conference one. It's going to be surreal. There are going to be times I know I will be out of body calling this, because emotionally, uh, it's going to be a lot. And I'm not going to be afraid to just let it rip and be be pretty raw, pretty, pretty transparent Saturday. So it'll be a different one for me in my 17 years of doing this and not going to hold back, man. It'll be fun. It is Unlocked, brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Put in that promo code, player props, sides, totals. They've got everything 24-7 right there at your fingertips. Put in the uh, next round promo code. You're going to get hooked up at checkout at MyBookie.ag. Happy Thanksgiving. Tell everybody hello. You guys have fun. Keep that bear spray handy. Appreciate it, Lance. Thank you. Right back at you with everybody down there, not only on this show, but all of your comrades. And uh, have, a, have a great time. Look forward to chatting next week. Okay, buddy. See you, bud.